Dear friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be diving into Narnia series on the Over the Wire, which is designed to sharpen and improve your cybersecurity skills. To be more specific, exploitation skills, including、uh, a bit complicated and difficult buffer overflow attack. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. Now let's jump in and start hacking away through this fantastic Narnia series. The level I'm going to do will be level two. So then we can head over to Caninix to begin with. Let me、uh, start from scratch. We can use SSH command. Let me auto complete this command to proceed, and、uh, you know we are required to supply the password for the current user. No problem, and we can get it from notebook. We can copy and paste it over here. Hit enter. Now we are in the target machine. We can press keys, Control Shift and L. At the same time, to clear screen, then we can get a bigger space on the window, and without any hesitation, we can navigate into working directory of this series, Narnia, and run ls command. And you know we are dealing with this file or this level, Narnia two, and also this. File as before has as you already bit, so it simply means when the current user Narnia two executes this file, will temporarily gets the privilege of its owner Narnia three. If we, you know, can get the privilege of the owner Narnia three, and then we can get the password right. And next we can try to. Get its type Narnia two, and this is the ELF or Linux executable thirty two bit. And as before,、uh, we are provided by or provided with its source code Narnia two. And not so complicated code. So here, this、uh, three lines. Are、uh, to include or import the headers file like standard input and output, and then define or declare main function. And this function has two arguments. The argue C. This means count of arguments. Okay, and then we'll declare the the you know the the variable, and this is the you know the 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 array or character array and its size is one hundred and twenty eight. Next, we'll check whether the count of arguments equals one. If equal one, it means that we didn't specify any arguments because you know the program name itself、uh, will occupy you know、uh, one argument. Okay, and then we'll call the function. String copy, and we'll copy our inputted arguments to this buffer. However, because this buffer has its size limitation one hundred twenty eight, but this one argument,、uh, you know, this function didn't make any check. So I think this is uh, uh, the buffer overflow、um, attack can come into play. For example, we can if we can. Overflow the buffer, you know this buffer, and then we can, you know, put shell code、uh, in the buffer, and then if we can manipulate returned address, and then we can、uh, get the shell. Okay, and because the shell belong to、uh, the its owner ninety three, then we can get the password of, of the next level. Okay, so I think this should be the primary principle behind this level. And this is what we are going to do. 
and now let's run this file if we didn't specify any argument, and then we'll, you know, we are a, a print. We are given uh, this usage or its usage. For example, we can uh, give an argument like a a a. You know, so whatever we input uh, will be、uh, returned. Okay, by this program. As as I as we analyzed earlier, this program has, you know the, you know has buffer overflow of attack. So how to test or how to check whether, ah、uh, this, vulnerability indeed exists? I think we can utilize one of a powerful reverse engineering tool, GDB. Okay, let's launch GDB, GDB, and followed by the binary name. And now we can set the, you know, disassembly failure, fail flavor. Sorry, Intel. And you know, if you want to get the, you know, the the functions, you can use this command, and then you can, you know, get all our、uh, functions. Okay, so dump of、uh, assembler code for function main. And I think this is the, you know, this line is to call. To call, yeah, this one to call this function string copy. Maybe we can set the breakpoint after,、uh, you know, this program calls this function. Maybe we can yeah use this one. Okay. So now,、uh, we can try to、uh, fit,、uh, you know, payload to this program. We can use, of course, you can use command line, but、uh, Python is great. We can use Python, so we can use subshell, and you know the Python three, as we know, Python two is not available on this machine, and we can simply、uh, print like a. We can fit. So, how much data? For example, one hundred fifty, and let's press enter. Let's continue. As you can see, the the EIP has been, you know, this is the EIP. If you、uh, want to get the registers, you can use this command. As you can see, the EIP. Has been overwritten by our、uh, payload by our manipulated data. EIP means extended instruction pointer. You know we need to overwrite this address、uh, because we want to manipulate the returned address or the address of the next instruction, and then can point to the shell code. Okay, so next. So how to next? Next, we need to、uh, we need to find the offset of this,、uh, you know, a buffer overflow attack. What or where the buffer overflow、uh, happens? Okay, and we can use another very useful、uh, utility from the you know from the mid point framework. Let me. Make the font bigger, so we can use pattern create. This is a Ruby, in written in Ruby, and we can create、uh, the the payload with a specific a、uh, pattern, and its length is two hundred. And we can copy this payload, and we can run、uh, the program with this payload again, and. As you can see, the now here, if you get the register, so you know this is the address of EIP. So next, we can、uh, get its offset. We can use another corresponding to offset, and we can copy、uh, this address. Copy 
and put over here. Oh, what I'm doing. Offset and so we can, I think we can copy from here and let's remove it. Okay, as you can see, exact match at offset 132. So I think now we have really successfully got the exact offset. So how about if we can uh, put some data and like, uh, you know, the length should be 132. Okay, and, and then we need to put some shell code. And in the end, we can uh, put the return address. So next, we need, of course, we need to get the address. So how to get such address, we can, you know, we can use, uh, maybe we can use this way, x 200 x after ESP, and we need to find A, so where is A? I think around, Oh, sorry. I think uh, this way is not a good way to find ESP. We can run uh, this again, run uh, subshell and Python 3, print. Okay. And now we can use A, 132, and B, 4, and this will occupy the EIP, right? And also we can put anything like uh, 10, press enter, and uh, C, and then we can use this way to retrieve maybe 200 after, you know, after ESP. ESP, and, you know, now here, we can select uh, uh, some address around here, because here it's safe, and we need, we can put the no operation, or do nothing, you know, the no operation, or do nothing, into this part, so, and if we can, if we can, you know, point our return address around here, around this address, and then, you know, then we'll execute some kinds of no operation and then followed by the shell code. And then we can get the, uh, you know, get a shell, okay? So how to do? Next, we need, of course, I cannot figure out a very good way. Uh, for me, I just try different address. Uh, from here uh, all the way to, I think, yeah, around here. And then I can find the uh, one address which can work, okay? So next job for us is to find uh, appropriate shell. And this one uh, can work fine. We can, you know, we can copy. And, and of course, I've already, you know, yeah, I've already got this, uh, this code here, and you can, you know, you can get, you can get its length by Python. You can run Python length So it's 33. So it means that we can put um, 132 minus 33 and no operation, and then followed by the shell code, and shell code is 33 in length, and then followed by the uh, four bytes of return address, okay? And the address, I think this address, I, I already explained, uh, we need to try different returned address until uh, this address can work for, uh, you know, for our purpose, okay? So now, I think now we can copy 
this line to see whether it's working or not. We can copy. We can copy. Exit because we do not need it. Do not need it. So now we can paste it over here. As you can see, now we have already uh, got the effective user ID of 93. Then we can get the password. Of course, again, when I did the this level uh, earlier, I tried several uh, return address, and this address can work very fine. Okay, so now uh, the Nanya pass and Nanya three, we successfully get the the password for the next level. So I think that's pretty much it. I'd like to see you in the next one. Bye. Have a nice day, please.